Welcome to the second episode of Science News Thursdays, the weekly series featuring snippets of science news stories and plenty of memes. Black Lord! Today we'll be talking about nesting fish beneath the Antarctic, as well as how scientists have vacuumed animal DNA from thin air for the first time, and more. So let's go right ahead and dive into this mess. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Cat. Beneath the Antarctic are unimaginable, horse, terrifying mountains of madness that will make you scream, Tekalili, Tekalili. <clears throat> Sorry about that. What I meant to say is that there are a lot of surprising life forms that have made their homes beneath the frigid ice of Antarctica. Life forms of evil! Just ignore that guy. 500 meters beneath the Antarctic ice sheets, the world's largest colony of nesting fish has been found. There are at least 60 million active nests of this kind of frosty fish across the Antarctic. That's an area equal to 240 square kilometers, 92 square miles, or something similar to Orlando, Florida. So, you know, good news for anyone into ice fishing, if you can make a hole in the ice sheet 500 meters deep. Spoilers, you can't! <laughs> But why is this a big deal? Well, previously, only small pockets of ice fish have been discovered. This new discovery could mean that Antarctic ice fish could have a much larger impact on the region's food webs than previously thought. Read the full article, linked in the description for more details. Turns out that vacuums aren't just tools for entertaining your pets or giving yourself hickeys. You know you've done it. One winter day in 2020, an ecologist by the name of Elizabeth Clare took a trip to Hammerton Zoo Park in England. As you can see here, she was walking around with what basically looked like a Nintendo crossed with a PKE meter from Ghostbusters. Her goal, though, was to suck up as much animal DNA as possible. Hang on! It's Mega Maid! She's gone from suck to blow. Claire admitted to sciencenews.org that it's such a crazy idea. We're vacuuming DNA out of the sky. Being able to siphon the DNA of animals straight out of the air has been on the minds of scientists apparently for over a decade. And if that sounds a little vague, you're not the only one that thinks so. But as a demonstration of possible utility, when DNA is collected from lakes and rivers, or really any place that features H2O, Scientists are then able to monitor and track species like salmon and sharks. If they were able to do this on land, then they would be able to do something very similar with land animals without having to necessarily always see them. Claire got the idea during an experiment where she sampled air outside the burrows of naked mole rats. But Claire isn't the only one with this idea. A totally different team of scientists affiliated with the University of Copenhagen also sought to suck up DNA at the Copenhagen Zoo. Though totally unbeknownst to Claire, but knownst to us. The devices this other team used were a bit different than Claire's Nintendo vacuum. Instead, they used small fans which bore striking resemblance to those used to cool down the PC you might or might not be watching this video on. The team, led by biologist Christine Bowman, was able to identify 49 different vertebrate species at the zoo. Bowman was able to pick up traces of animals from the enclosures that were sampled with their fans, but they were also able to track birds and mammals from other exhibits. But perhaps the most surprising thing was that the team was able to identify the DNA of fish that were used to feed those animals as well. Check out the full article in the description for additional details. The Hunga Tonga volcanic eruption I reported on last week managed to destroy three islands and reduce the Tonga volcano to smithereens. As of writing this script, the latest news surrounding the cataclysm is that the volcano is basically just gone. While we're starting to get some estimates for the damage and casualties left in the wake of the volcano, that'll have to wait for a full-length video. Somewhat related, though, is the damage that can be caused by one of the most destructive features caused by an eruption. Never take me alive! No, we're not talking about general human stupidity in the midst of disasters, but rather the violent and volatile pyroclastic flows that sealed Pompeii's fate in 79 CE, which consequently was even more deadly because the people of Pompeii simply ignored the warnings they were given. It's a feature, not a bug. No. <laughs> hmm. 
I wonder if that's like anything else that has happened in human history. Pyroclastic flows are known to be the most dangerous aspect of a volcanic eruption, but why? Well, thanks to experiments conducted at Massey University in Palmerston, North New Zealand, we have some more concrete answers. Basically, as these avalanches of volcanic rock and gas steamroll through terrain, and anything or anyone that happens to be in their way, they're accompanied by what's described in the linked article as pulses of high pressure that form within the sliding volcanic material. This video is from the experiments in which research attempted to simulate pyroclastic flows on a smaller scale. Man, this is one of the coolest videos I've seen. Man, scientists get to have all the fun, don't they? What they found was that pyroclastic flows seem to have their own internal rhythm that multiplies their destructive force. It's basically like a jackhammer. And the researchers involved say that the hazard assessments for eruptions that include the possibility for pyroclastic flows could be woefully underestimating the potential devastation they can wreak. Check out the full article for more details. What the crap is a cosmic cow? When I saw this story, I just had to click on it, if only out of morbid curiosity. I mean, I remember a cosmic cow head from the Archie TMNT comics. That was certainly weird. And don't worry, for those of you who have an irrational fear of bovine, yes, that's a real phobia, look it up, it's called bovinophobia. This isn't relating to actual cows in space at all. Shocking. I know. But that cow head was certainly up to something, something sinister. Hey, doesn't Deadpool have that phobia too? Cosmic cows are apparently a new class of cosmic explosion, specifically supernovae. One such dazzling explosion caught relatively recently may be the brightest ever recorded. The first of these cow-like events was witnessed way back in the long, long ago of 2018 in the before time. Astronomers named that one AT2018 cow and the last part of that name has stuck as a catch-all for explosions that match that first event. These novae appear to make up 0.1% of all supernovae we observe in the night sky. When a cosmic cow happens, they brighten with a display of brilliant ultraviolet and blue light. But the most surprising thing is that they can continue to show up in observations for months after the original event. These further observations are typically in the form of high-energy X-rays and low-energy radio waves. The newest cow, called AT2020 MRF, managed a glow about 20 times more intense than the inciting event. But at the American Astronomical Society, Caltech astronomer Yuhan Yao reported that the X-rays observed after the original cosmic cow weren't just 20 times more intense, but rather 200 times more intense. In April 2021, researchers using the Spectrum Rotgen Gamma Space Telescope, or SRG for short, made a startling discovery. They reported to Yao and all those that work with her that there was an interesting signal trapped in the SRG data relating to Yao's discovery. Yao told ScienceNews.org that, I almost immediately realized that this might be another cow-like event. And what's the most likely explanation for these rare supernovae? Most probably an extremely small object like a feeding black hole or magnetar. Now I will never be able to see black holes as anything other than giant cows eating the universe's grass. Joke's on you, black holes really are just giant cows. Check out the article in the description for further details. <laughs> Speaking of black holes, cows, black holes, cows, are usually portrayed as natural obstacles in science fiction stories. Going anywhere near them is a bad idea. A decade ago, a dwarf galaxy located in the constellation Pyxis, some 30 million light years away from us, sparked a debate amongst astronomers. The argument was over whether or not dwarf galaxies could harbor supermassive black holes like the one that rests at the center of our own galaxy. Now, NASA and the ESA are reporting that the Hubble Space Telescope has observed a black hole in the same dwarf galaxy that is actively causing new stars to form. Yeah, that's awesome. Amy Reins, when interviewed by ScienceDaily.com, says that, 10 years ago, as a graduate student thinking I would spend my career on star formation, I looked at the data from Henai's 2.10 and everything changes. From the beginning, I knew something unusual and special was happening in Henai's 2.10. And now, Hubble has provided a very clear picture of the connection between the black hole and a neighboring star-forming region located 230 light years from the black hole. And incredibly, the connection that Reen speaks of is what appears to be an umbilical of gas that stretches to a luminous stellar nursery. Before this trail of cosmic material arrived, this location was already home to a dense shell of gas. Hubble's spectroscopy has shown that this umbilical of gas is moving somewhere around 1 million miles per hour, 
or 277.77 miles per second and 447.02 kilometers per second. This is somewhere around a speed of light value of 0 0.0008, so it's nowhere near as fast as the relativistic jets we observe from supermassive black holes, and in fact this phenomena is the exact opposite of that. For more details on this phenomenon and the complex science involved, check the article in the description. That's all I've got for you this week, but check back next Thursday for more science news and memes. If you dug this video, be sure to do all that algorithmic jazz. Like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and share this video with someone who loves science and space news. And hey, if you dig black holes, check out this overview series on their amazing and sometimes terrifying power. Hint, relativistic jets are some of the most destructive forces in the universe. Hey, wow, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time. Beware the might of the almighty space cow.